Good morning. Thank you for joining us at St. Stephen's Lutheran Church in Hickory, North Carolina. I have a couple of announcements before we get started. Please pray for Heather Knupp, granddaughter of Glenda Knupp, and her fiancé Tommy Brooks. They had a fire in their condo this week while they were at work. They lost all of their belongings as well as their pet cat. We ask for prayers of healing for Roxanne Duncan, who fell and fractured her knee, Candy Sexton, who fell and broke some bones in her hand, Joyce O'Dell, who broke her wrist, and Margie Eisenhower's daughter, Debbie, who has begun chemo. If anyone needs help with their yards, please call the church office. God's blessings to you all. Now let's begin our worship service. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Pastor Leonard Bullock. This is St. Stephen's Lutheran Church in Hickory, North Carolina, in the United States of America. We're so glad that you can worship with us today, members and guests. Our first hymn for the day is Savior Like a Shepherd. If you happen to have a hymnal handy in the Evangelical Lutheran Book of Worship, it's page 789. We begin our worship today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, thanking God for our holy baptism. 
It's in the water and the word that God claims us and calls us by name. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So we thank God now for claiming us in the water and in the word. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to a new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. And we did not know the way. You sent the good shepherd to lead us and to guide us. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water and the font of holy baptism, and for water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love, O Lord. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life only that you can give. To you be honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and you lead us safely through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the glorious feast prepared in your house. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is John 10, verses 1 through 11. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens, the sheep hears his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. The stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of the stranger. This figure Jesus uses, used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not he heed them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Gracious God, we ask that you might speak, that we might hear, and we might respond as you would have us. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, the great shepherd, the shepherd of the sheep. Amen. This is Good Shepherd Sunday around the world. It's a time when we look at texts in Holy Scripture that talk about God being the shepherd or how Jesus is the great shepherd of the sheep and we are the sheep, that we follow Jesus to find pasture. In fact, there are 249 references in the Old Testament and in the New Testament that refer to Jesus or to God as being the shepherd and we are the sheep. 
It's a marvelous symbolism to help us understand how it is that God walks with us and guides us. Frankly, Jesus was never a shepherd, not in the sense of caring for sheep. Jesus, our Lord, was a carpenter, and he was the son of the carpenter. But he used the symbolism of shepherd and sheep because everyone in the Holy Land understands that imagery. In the time of Jesus, you could look out over the hills and you could clearly find almost everywhere shepherds and sheep on the hillsides. In fact, when the angels told about the birth of Jesus, who did they see first? The shepherds and told them there had been a birth in Bethlehem. Everyone in that day could understand what it meant to be a shepherd, what it meant to be sheep. So it's marvelous symbolism. It helps us understand how it is that God walks with us every step of the way. And frankly, even today, around Jerusalem, around Bethlehem, you can look over on the hillsides and you can still see shepherds taking care of the sheep. It's an absolutely beautiful sight. A professor who taught biblical studies uh, put together a trip to the Holy Land. He had a busload of students, and as he was lecturing the students on the bus, he was explaining to the students how it is that here in this part of the world, shepherds always walk in front of the sheep. They never follow them behind, from behind, as they do in almost, other, uh, in almost all the other parts of the world. As he was making that emphatic point, the bus stopped, and lo and behold, a flock of sheep happened to be crossing the road in front of the bus. That's why the bus stopped. And the students noticed, and the professor, that there was a person behind the sheep driving them with a whip. The professor was stunned. The bus was stopped, so he got off the bus, and he cried or screamed to the person who was driving the sheep from behind. He said to him, pardon me, sir, but he said, I've always heard and read that shepherds here in this part of the world lead the sheep from behind. They never, never follow them from behind like you're doing. And the person with the whip hollered back, well, you're right, but you see, I'm not a shepherd. I'm the village butcher. The point here is that Jesus our Lord came not to drive us to death and to despair, but rather to lead us to life eternal. Now, in the gospel lesson for today, Jesus our Lord is talking to his disciples and he's trying to explain to them how it is that he is with them, how he guides them, how he protects them. So, as Jesus does so very, very well, he gives an example. He explains to them if there's a sheepfold, and a sheepfold is a, a kind of a enclosure, kind of like a fenced-in area. And Jesus said, if sheep are in the sheepfold, and the shepherd comes to the gate of that sheepfold, then the sheep inside will know the voice of the shepherd, and they will go with the shepherd. If it's a thief, they will not recognize the voice, and they will not go with the thief, but they'll go with the shepherd. In fact, if the shepherd calls a sheep by name, then they will follow. And interestingly, a lot of times, shepherds actually have names for a lot of their sheep. Most sheep foals are about 50 to 100, so they can, for the most part, have names for those sheep, and they become really very, very close over the years. Jesus, when he called people by name, they heard their voice and they responded. For example, the blind man who Jesus healed in the chapter just before this 10th chapter heard the voice of Jesus and he was able to see. Lazarus was in the tomb and Jesus said to Lazarus, come out! And Lazarus came out of the tomb after having been dead several days, because he recognized the voice of Jesus. Mary, at the tomb Easter morning, she, she was there. She thought she saw a gardener. She was sure it was a gardener. No one she knew. 
And all of a sudden, Jesus our Lord called Mary by name. Mary? And she heard her voice, she heard the voice of Jesus, and she said, my Lord, my teacher. You see, when Jesus calls us by name, we hear that voice and we respond. And Jesus ultimately calls us by name in holy baptism. Mary, John, Martha, Bob, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Called by name, lives change forever. Now, the disciples didn't quite understand what Jesus was saying about the sheepfold or the fenced-in area, so he tried again. He said, I am the gate, and I will take you and I will help you find pasture. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I came that you may have life and that you might have it abundantly. Some years ago, I had an opportunity to be in Papua New Guinea. It's not too far from Australia, and we were there to visit other Lutherans in that country. And while we were there, we had opportunities to go out into the bush. We would sometimes go in vehicles. Other times we would float down the river just to be at places where they most likely had never seen anyone like us. And when we would get into these villages in Papua New Guinea, there would be some kind of a fence around the village, and there would be a gate at the village, and then there would be guards at that gate during the night to protect us. Jesus says, I am the gate. I'm going to protect you day and night. The other lesson that we heard read today is the 23rd chapter of Psalms. Imagine if you can, young David out in the wilderness taking care of the sheep <clears throat> before he's been tapped to be the king, or maybe after he's king and he's remembering what it was like to be out in the wilderness, the desert, taking care of the sheep. David had to protect those sheep from wild animals, from bad weather, from thieves. So he knew what it was like to talk about the idea of a shepherd. The 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. My rod and my staff, they comfort you. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall be with me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It must be one of the most popular psalms in all of Scripture. Marvelous text to remind us that there are times when we're in some pretty swift water. We need a shepherd to bring us to where the waters are not so turbulent. Sheep really don't react very well to swift water, nor do we. And I'm telling you, the water's been pretty swift the last month or so. So we need someone to give us that calming spirit. The text says the shepherd goes with us through death's valley for those people that we love and for us. God goes with us when we are among our enemies. There are just people that don't like us, don't care for us, treat us poorly. God is always with us. And we will ultimately dwell with God. Then we know that the good shepherd has a rod and a staff to protect us. Let me tell you what I mean by that. This is a staff that someone gave to me a few years ago. And even now today, shepherds in the Palestine area carry a staff like this. And they use it to care for the sheep. If a sheep would happen to get out of line, they can take this hook and they can wrap that hook around the sheep's neck and they can bring it where it needs to be. Or they can kind of poke the sheep in a gentle way, I'm sure, but it's to use to take care of the sheep. That's the staff that the 23rd Psalm talks about. 
This is the rod. A rod looked very much like this with a ball on the end with a long handle. And the shepherds had this rod to protect the sheep from wild animals that might come at night. The staff wasn't very good for that, but the rod worked great. So our protector, Jesus our Lord, carries a rod and staff to care for us. Just interesting imagery to help us understand how God is always with us. Now, when we in our Lutheran church have a funeral, people gather in the worship service, and very near the end of the service, after we have celebrated the resurrection faith, we remembered the life of the person who has died. We know that they have died in the Lord. We have this that we repeat near the end of that service. We say that this person, oftentimes the pastor puts his or her hand on the coffin or on the ashes, whatever we have there, and we say that this person is a sheep of your own fold, O oh God. This person is a lamb of your own flock. This person is a sinner of your own redeeming, and you are the great shepherd, and we commend them to you. You cared for them in this life. We know that you will be their great shepherd in the future. What a comfort. That's why so many times the 23rd Psalm is read during a funeral service. We remember in that service that we are the sheep and God in Christ is the shepherd, the good shepherd of the sheep. It was a very stormy night. It was a very stormy night. And an elderly couple stopped by this small hotel in Philadelphia. The weather was so bad, it was very late. They went to the person behind the counter and they said, we'd like a room for tonight. We're so weary of driving. And the person said, I'm sorry, but we don't have any rooms. There are three conventions in town and there's just nothing available. And when the person behind the counter George Bolt saw their disappointment. He said to them, I, I just can't turn you away. He said, I tell you what, if you don't mind staying in a very small room, you can have my room for the night and I'll sleep here in the lobby. Well, as you might imagine, they were hesitant, but it was a really bad night. So they said, okay. The next morning when they were checking out, uh, the man said to the person behind the counter, George Bolt, we need more people like you running hotels across this nation. He said, you know, sometime I might just build a hotel for you to manage. A couple years later, uh, George Bolt received a letter from a law firm in New York, and the note said that a, ho uh, a hotel was being built just near completion, and they'd like George Bolt to be the manager. And he accepted that job offer, and he remembered then how this couple on this stormy night had stopped by the hotel, how he'd given them a room, and how the person said, I may just build a hotel for you sometime. He looked to see what their name might be. It was Mr. and, Ms. <clears throat> Mr. and Mrs. William Waldorf Astor. And they invited him to come and run the hotel. And he's the one that actually came up with the idea of 24-hour service, room service. It never happened until he came up with the idea. Now, that was in the 1880s that that took place. 2,000 years ago, on a stormy day, about midday, there was a terrible storm. The curtains in the temple were ripped open from top to bottom. There was an earthquake. The storm was on Calvary, where Jesus our Lord died. And he died and rose again to build for us salvation. And we are now this day led by the good shepherd, that good shepherd of the sheep the one who opens the door for us at all times and in all places. So we celebrate this day the Good Shepherd. 
The Lord be with you. Amen. The next hymn that we're going to have an opportunity to hear, played by Nathan Brickman, our organist here at St. Stephen's, is The King of Love My Shepherd Is. Nathan? Every Sunday when we get together, we recall our faith using the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed. So if someone would say to you, what do you believe? You could say the Creed, the Apostles' Creed. It's divided into three parts. It has a section about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Tradition would say that the Apostles actually put in place the Apostles' Creed. Now that's legend, 12 apostles, 12 different articles of the creed. But it's certainly a statement of what we believe. And it's how the church was able to agree, not long after the apostles had died, about what they thought God was calling them to be about 
and what God had done on earth through Jesus. So let's confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of God the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Good and gracious and loving God, we pray to you this day, knowing that you are the good shepherd and that we are the sheep of your pastor. We thank you, O oh Lord, for your son Jesus, who came who suffered on our behalf, who died on a cross, who three days later rose from the dead, suffering all the sins for your world. So, O oh Lord, this day we remember that symbolism of the Good Shepherd, the death and resurrection, how Jesus came that we might have life, and we might have it more abundantly, how he came to give his life for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, gracious God, we worship this day through virtual worship. It's so different. It's a challenge. But we know, O oh Lord, that you bind us together through your love, through your death and resurrection. So we pray this day that we might be a part of your family of faith as we are a part of the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A gracious God, we are your children, and we know that these are challenging times for each other and for us. It's challenging at times to be separated, and yet we know that separation is good because that binds us together. We care for ourselves and for each other, but be with us in this lonely, unusual, challenging time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh Lord, for all those people on the front lines, those people who in some ways risk their lives daily, as they are about in this world, as they're uncertain about who has the, the coronavirus and what we should do if we think we might have the virus. It's just uncertainty, O oh Lord, but we are your sheep and you are our shepherd. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask, O oh Lord, that you might be with us. Sometimes we don't know what to ask for, but we ask, O oh Lord, that you give to us those things that you know that we need. We trust you to lead us by still waters, to care for us with your rod and your staff, to lead us where we need to go. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray now together the prayer that our Lord Jesus gave to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. 
the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Knowing that Jesus our Lord is the great shepherd of the sheep, that he suffered and died and rose again, that we may have life and we might have it more abundantly. We are then able, with enthusiasm and joy, to go in peace, to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Our last hymn for the day is All People That Are On Earth. If you happen to have an Evangelical Lutheran Book of Worship, it's hymn 883. God bless you.